Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Socially Distant Discover Nature. Today's topic is meadow creation, following on from last week's, which was meadow management. So that might seem like we're doing things a little bit back to front, and we are, but we'll get into that later. First off, let's start with a catch up. Mega sent in this striking photo of a red leg shield bug. Really distinct looking. She's also put out a stealth camera and got this footage of a curious looking mouse. And also a hedgehog that's practicing some genuine biological pest control. In last week's episode, we covered meadow management, so the cutting back of meadows. This week, we're going to be doing meadow creation. So why are they all happening at the same time? Well, in autumn, existing meadows do need cutting, but also, depending on what method you use to create new meadows, you also need to do it in the autumn as well. So it's a busy time period. The easiest way to create a wildflower meadow is the wait and see method. So if you have a lawn, existing patch of grass, from January onwards, just stop cutting it and see what grows up month after month after month. You might be pleasantly surprised. I found a sea of blue flowers, speedwell, carpeting in kind of springtime. There was also some tiny little violets as well, so you never know what's going to pop up. And once you've let the meadow do its thing for a season, maybe you decide you're not entirely happy with what's there, so that's when you can plant extra plug plants, existing well-grown wildflower plants, into the meadow to supplement the biodiversity. And again, that's what I did here with knapweed, muskmallow, and oxeye daisy. So maybe you've been monitoring your lawn for a while and you've decided that the area is a write-off, there's no naturally existing wildflowers, or you've got a sort of patch of bare earth or other ground that you want to turn into a wild flower meadow. So the next method is to start from scratch. Firstly, you need to create a bare patch of earth. You might already have that, but if you're doing it in your lawn, you might need to dig up a significant plot, which is hard work and why I did not bother here. But we might experiment by trying a miniature one in the old, slightly failed veg patch. The important thing is to remove the turf, take it off site, compost it somewhere else. You want to take away as much nutrients as possible because wildflowers thrive in low nutrient conditions where the big sort of tall grasses cannot outcompete them. When you're preparing a patch of bare earth, make sure to, to rake it over. You want a nice kind of soft crumbly texture. Get rid of any large stones and pebbles. The Grow Wild project even recommends that once you've done that, you leave it for a few weeks just to see what vigorous weeds grow up and then you can rip them out as well. And then give it a good rake over again and then you're ready to sow the seeds. Once you've got your patch of bare earth, you've got a few choices now. You could try plug plants, but if you're doing this as part of a community meadow, not in someone's back garden, we found that plug plants were quite liable to vandalism by both humans and animals. Quite nice to just pull them out and fling them around. Possibly the blackbirds are responsible. Beaky! Anyway, that's one method. I would recommend that rather than using plug plants, you sow wildflower seeds. And now at this point, again, you've got two choices. So if you want a sudden burst of pure wildflowers, as we've done at St. Nick's in certain, well, I say we, as the rangers have done at St. Nick's in certain areas, then you can get packets of purely wildflower seed mix. And if you're part of a community group doing this out in sort of public spaces, you might be able to get wildflower seeds from various projects such as Grow Wild, you can provide them for free. These purely wildflower seed packets are quite good for small areas as well for a sudden flourish of colour. On the other hand, if you're looking for a more natural wildflower meadow and potentially over a big area, then I would recommend a seed mix that contains both wildflower seeds and specialised wild grass seeds in a, a ratio of 20% wildflowers to about 80% grasses. Seems like it should be the other way around, but that is the kind of industry standard for grass 
flower mix ratios. The grasses in these seed mix will be different to the vigorous lawn grasses and they'll be the ones that you get in the wild, such as Yorkshire Fog, Coxfoot, some other grasses that I can't remember. So once you've prepared your patch of bare earth, it's simply a matter of scattering the wildflower seeds fairly evenly over the surface. You can mix them with a little bit of sand so you can see where you've been flinging them. Definitely don't mix them with compost, we don't want any extra nutrients on there enriching the soil. Once you've scattered your seeds, give it just the finest rake over, not too vigorous, and then a gentle watering with a watering can, hose pipe, whatever you've got to hand. You then have a choice of whether you want to protect it with netting from the birds. I would probably say no, there's enough netting in the world, tangling up various creatures, and there's probably plenty of fruit at this time of year. And also if you're feeding the birds, that's kind of distraction feeding. So the chances are they probably won't need to eat your wildflower seeds. It certainly won't stop curious birds coming and pecking over looking for grubs, even if they're not interested in your seeds, but that's part of nature and just enjoy it. You can always scatter a few more seeds if you think it's becoming a bit patchy. And so why are we doing this in autumn? Well, some of the wildflower seeds will need to experience the colder climate of winter in order to kind of get them going into spring. And hopefully in spring, once you've done this, you should have a rather nice wildflower meadow. Fingers crossed. So that's a very brief introduction to creating wildflower meadows. What I'll do is there's plenty of websites out there where you get more information. I will put them in the video description link on YouTube, certainly to the Grow Wild project, again to the, the Plant Life website that we talked about last week. This are all good stuff. And I recommend checking them out. If you're gonna try out this project, let us know, and more importantly, send us some photos of your work. And again, in spring, we'd love to see the results. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck, and until next time, goodbye.